people. Uh, we've got with us uh, Ralph Silver. He is a strategist at Silver Research Network. Thank you so much for joining us today. Just looking at um, HSBC, obviously uh, the assumption is that Asia really is what's driving uh, the company. Diversity, presumably, in these days is good. It's the only way to survive. If you look at HSBC, BNP that reported also this week, mm -hmm. look at all the Canadian banks, they all did well simply because of the diversification of the organizations, which is, of course, completely opposite to the ones like RBS and Lloyds in the UK that aren't doing as well simply because they're not as diversified as they, in fact, should be. Mm. And when we see these banks edging back into profit, uh, does that mean, in a way, that the banking sector's crisis is less severe? Is it too early to say that it's over? Is there a danger of that? It's too early to say it's over. Mm -hmm. It's safe to say that maybe the top 20% of the banks, yes, it's done. They're well capitalized, they'll survive, everything will be fine. But the rest of the banks still don't have sufficient capital. And I'm not just talking about regulatory capital, just capital to pay all their bills. So I think we're going to have to see at least another $300 billion worth of capital going into the smaller banks within all of Europe. And only at that point will we say that they're safe. Now, we have seen uh, loan losses going down across the board. Why is that significant? Well, uh, first of all, it's great news. It's mm -hmm. people are paying their debts or people aren't taking out new loans at the fear that they might not be able to pay it back. Or so banks aren't giving out loans. As well as <laughs> banks are simply make, being very selective on who they give loans mm -hmm. to. But what we're also seeing is that most of the losses are coming off of the big organizations, and they're the ones that are suffering the most. So th there's a little fear there, but overall it's a good message. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at RBS, um, because it does seem that uh, despite the narrowing, uh, again, it doesn't seem they can do very much to to gain popularity. Sure. Uh, we're celebrating the fact they didn't lose as much as they should have, so, yeah. uh, which is a, which is a kind of an odd yes. thing. The problem with RBS is they're not divesting themselves of the assets they should be divesting themselves. Right. They're under this belief that the economy is going to turn around so quickly that they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, RBS made a lot of money in retail banking. I say unfortunate because they're far more profitable in investment banking. We want to see them far more diversified. And there's a lot of fear out there that if the customers don't come back to the investment banking unit, RBS has no way of surviving. Mm. No, let's look at that investment banking unit. Is part of it uh, the issues that they have about remuneration and bonuses? Well, that is part of it, but it's a small part. I right. think the majority of it is the fact that businesses, especially large businesses, are afraid to do business with RBS. And they are afraid because they have an option of going to an HSBC or a BNP, which are far safer organizations. They're losing some of their biggest customers because of the because the government owns part of it. Yeah, indeed. We're post Basel now and we're post G20. Um, banks have a time to digest all of that. Is there a sense with you, I think, in what you're saying, that the good banks are actually okay and they're doing quite well? There's almost a bigger divergence now between those who can make it and, and those who are struggling. It, and it's growing week mm -hmm. by week. It's growing. You have the BNPs and the HSBCs and Santander's of the world that are doing incredibly well considering the economic situation. And then you have the RBSs and the smaller banks that aren't doing as well. Mm -hmm. What I am looking to happen within the next few months is some of those larger, well-capitalized well banks, they're going to start buying. They have to start buying. We're going to see a huge uh, number of consolidations in next year. And I think that if you're an investor, mm. look for the ones doing the consolidation. You're going to do really well. Okay. Just before you go, I'd like to ask you a little bit about Lloyd's uh, changes at the top. What do you think? Absolutely great. We, uh, Lloyd's biggest problem is the fact that they're not an efficient bank and they don't have the technology. They're bringing in somebody who did that very, those very two things at Santander, and it's going to make Lloyd's a much better organization. So I think it's very, very positive. Okay. Ralph, thank you very much indeed as ever for joining us today. Thank you.